How's it going YouTube? We are back. This time we are catching up on the post lockout trades. Um, spring training is Friday, I believe, post lockout. Um, and a lot has happened in like the first week since officially getting an MLB season. Um, it's been a while. I haven't really talked about the MLB at all for a, a pretty decent amount of time. And I, I think right now is a good time to get started being that there is uh, so much going on. Um, the first trade I will mark is the A's getting pitcher JT Jin, who is now the sixth prospect in the A system, as well as starting pitcher Adam Aller, who is now the 23rd pick or 30, 23rd uh, prospect in the A's system in exchange for Chris Bassett. So I think that's a pretty decent return for Bassett. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm necessarily sold on him just yet, but he does add to a, a pretty stacked Oh, what looks like a stacked rotation in New York for the Mets. Uh, you have Scherzer, you have DeGrom, Cookie Carrasco, who had injury problems last year, Bassett. And I feel like I'm missing someone else, but I'm not even going to try to figure it out. But that rotation looks pretty good. I think he, he has some nice depth, a good inning eater, as well as the, the other two in front of him. So we'll see. I mean, the Mets look like they're they're in here, so... I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he is legit. Bassett uh, is not like a, a one-year kind of guy. And he he goes in there, he, he deals for as long as he possibly can, for as many innings as he possibly can. And uh, they, let's let's hope for the best. But right now, I think that I think the return for Oakland is, is a pretty good return. I think it's a fair deal all the way around. Minnesota. Minnesota decided to make some moves. Uh, they get their hands on Isaiah Kiner-Falefa and Ronnie Henriquez, who is now the 19th prospect in their system in exchange for Mitch Garver. So I think Mitch Garver is a pretty good catcher. Um, I think Texas wins this deal. I like Mitch Garver a lot. He is a little bit power dependent, but he is one of the better framers in the league and probably one of the more underrated ones uh, defensively. I just think that, you know, they were, they didn't have a catcher. I was wondering if they were going to wait for Sam Huff or if they were going to let Kiner fill up a catch. I don't know what the deal was there, but, um, that answers my question pretty quickly with Garver. I think that's a great fit. They have a, they're have they starting to build something there. They they have a pretty solid infield. And they're spending money and they're, they're trading away assets. They're, they're looking to make a run. I, I think that, that this is a good move for them. Like they needed a catcher. I still think the starting pitching needs some help. But they're on the right track, Texas is. Uh, Minnesota trades. Or Minnesota gets their hands on Sonny Gray. Starting pitching Sonny Gray. And Francis Paguero in exchange for Chase Petty, who was their number five, or who is now the Reds' number five prospect. I think that's too much for Sonny Gray, in my opinion. I I, um, I like Sonny Gray a lot, but I just don't think that you, you're going to get necessarily the the production that you're hoping for out of a, out of a you know, a top five prospect, now a top five prospect. Um, I just don't, I don't know. I know Sonny's good. I like Sonny. I just don't think that he's he's worth that much. You do get a pitcher in return, but I don't know too much about him. Uh, he's not a ranked prospect. I don't know if he was MLB talent already, but I, I think that I think the Reds win this one. The Yankees. Oh man, the Yankees. I have a I have some Yankee fan friends that are really upset with this. Um, what looks like a pretty decent trade to start with. You get Donaldson, a big power right-handed hitting bat. Isaiah Kiner Falefa, who could play all around the diamond, and Ben Rortvet, who I don't know too much about, but he looks like he's going to catch. Um, in exchange for Gary Sanchez and Gio Urshela. So um, that's rough because you take the entirety of Donaldson's co contract and you get versatility out of Kiner Falefa and you get your hand on another catcher, but I, you lose Gary Sanchez and you lose Gio Urshela. And. It's, it was apparent they were going to give up on Sanchez. He just can't figure it out uh, defensively behind the plate. He has a rocket of an arm, but he cannot hit. But there's always that chance that he figures it out. And he has so much power. If he does figure it out, he can hit 40 bombs at Yankee Stadium. But And then you trade away Jared Urshela on top of it, who looks to be a solid defensive, you know, at least a defensive-minded third baseman. That only says a shortstop. He can play shortstop as well. But he immensely talented, great against lefties. I just I, I don't see that. I think I think Minnesota wins that deal because they get rid of the money in, in Donaldson. Uh, they basically just slipped Kiner Falefa. And like I said, I don't know too much about Ben Rortvet. You guys will have to let me know um, how good is he. He's not you know he's not considered a prospect because he's not in the Yankees uh, top thirty. So I don't know the deal there. But I, I just think the the Minnesota like they get 
I know they get risk in Sanchez, but the, the reward is, I think, I think the ceiling is better there for, for Minnesota. And then the big one, this is the biggest one in my opinion. Oakland gets Christian Pache, who is now the number three prospect. Shailen Lears, who is now the number two prospect. Joey Estes, who is now their number 14th prospect. And Ryan Cusick, their number seven prospect now. So a center fielder, a catcher, and two pitchers in exchange for first base from Matt Olson. Wow, what a haul. That is a that is a, a great haul for Matt Olson. Um I think they overpaid. I think they overpaid for Matt Olson. I like Matt Olson a lot. He's great. He's proven. But Pache looks to be a stud. He looks so good in those in those uh, twenty twenty playoffs. Um, I hate to see him go like that. It 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 sucks because I know he wanted to be a Brave, and um, you know there now there's a lot of question marks. Um, Pache didn't have a good twenty twenty one, but that's a lot of prospect in exchange for Matt Olson, and this means. Who, they've already extended them as well to a, to an eight-year deal. So this means they have a long-term first baseman, but they haven't removed their offer from Freddie Freeman. If Freddie does come back to Atlanta, does that mean they're going to shove Olsen into the outfield? He's played outfield before in Oakland. I just don't know if that's where he truly wants to be. But we also have Universal DH. That's, that, that could change everything. Because now you have both of those guys... Um, Whoever the better defensive first baseman can play first base. They're both great defensively. They're both gold glovers, I believe. So, I mean, they get their guy that they want, but they paid a hefty price to do it. So, I think that's a good a good trade all the way around. But I do think Atlanta overpaid a little. And Seattle. This is a big splash that I was not expecting, to be honest with you, for Seattle. They get left fielder Jesse Winger, who was an MVP candidate early on. And Eugenio Suarez, who strikes out the most out of anybody in the league. Um, but he's another guy like Gary Sanchez. Like, if he figures it out, he's so dangerous. He hits so much power. If he figures it out, Seattle isn't much for, for a hitter's park, but he can hit 30 bombs there. I, I believe that wholeheartedly that he hits 30 bombs in Seattle if he can, if he can start making more contact. But Cincinnati in return gets Justin Dunn, Jake Fraley, Brandon Williamson, who is now the number four prospect and a player to be named later. Um, Justin Dunn and Jake Fraley are both MLB talents. I just don't think they're all that. Um, Brandon Williamson obviously is a solid prospect they get in return and who knows what the player to be named later will be those guys uh, tend to not be too too much but then again I believe Chris Taylor was a player to be named later kind of thing there's been a there's been a couple of guys that have become player to be named later who have who have really uh, blossomed into nice nice talent so um, I still think Seattle gets the better end of it MLB caliber or MVP caliber left fielder and Jesse Winker you know, an extreme power threat in Eugenio Suarez. Uh, but Cincinnati gets some MLB quality talent and, uh, and a solid prospect in, in Williamson. So uh, that's going to do it for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe. Comment what you guys think about all these trades. Which trade was the best? Who was the biggest winner? Who was the biggest loser? Uh, truth, truthfully, I really don't know. Um, comment any videos that you've done in the future. I'll see you guys next time.